what's up everybody so today we got a product review we got our build co notcher here this is a partnership that i work together with adam from build co on i got a guillotine notcher and some extra shafts a offset plate a ang billet angle finder and there might be something else i'm missing i don't remember i got the box here i just got it today if this is the same boxing that he does for everybody, it's a super stout box. Originally, I was going to pull it all out, but honestly, I just want everybody to see how it's packaged too, because we all know how good packaging can be sometimes and not good. It can be other times. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out the components, lay them out, and then uh, I'll probably cut the video, um, unwrap some of the bubble wrap and stuff like that off the camera, get all the components laid out, and then fire the camera back up and do like an assembly and talking about the product a little more. So let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed. All right, so starting out, we got some paper. Everything's really good and, and bubble wrapped. It looks like we got our extra shav and the shaft we ordered. So there's probably, I think it's a, a 5 8 shaft and a half inch shaft for the different size hole saw threads. So some of these are 5 8 and some of these are a uh, half inch. Okay, this thing looks pretty assembled. I didn't know how assembled it was gonna come, but this looks like uh, the base or the one part of, oh, this is the adjustment part. So this is the bottom part of the guillotine, the angle uh, section, and then the where the bearing plate bolts to. Get the rest of the paper out of the way here. I'm not sure what that piece is. It's hard to tell. This looks like it might be the bearing plate. This is the other plate that goes on the other side of the bearing plate, I believe. This is the billet angle finder. And then this is the top section of the guillotine. I know what that other piece was. This is the handle to tighten the guillotine down. So that's everything in the box. Go ahead and put the paper back. And then I'll probably just do a time lapse of me uh, undoing all the bubble wrap and stuff. And then we'll talk about the product some more. See you in a minute. So it's the next day. Um, you guys seen the intro of me unboxing it. And then you also seen a little time lapse of me taking all the bubble wrap off. I got everything laid out. I'm going to talk about some of the components, uh, talk about kind of setting it up, putting it together essentially, because there is like some assembly required. And then uh, we'll get into maybe notching some tubes. Okay. So first what we got is your main your main fixture okay so this is like this would be like your base it's adjustable uh, i believe you have 230 degrees i believe it is so it's 115 one way and 115 the other way okay you have a pointer okay and then usually what you do is like you'd use like an angle finder and zero it tweak the pointer so it's perfect um, I did kind of check it yesterday, I'd like put everything together real quick and kind of like looked at it. And it looks like he sets this thing zero or pretty close to zero. Um, I'll probably end up pulling this out and maybe sharpening it and bending it down a little closer and then really dialing in exactly where zero is and tweaking it so that it's as perfect as possible. Um, but for what I've noticed with this notcher is that Adam that runs BuildCo has to be a guy that either uses this thing daily or used other notchers daily and got sick of things not working right or breaking and then or he's really good at taking customer feedback or both okay because there are so many little things on this that would be things that I would change when I buy stuff I would buy things and be like 
oh, well, I don't like that. This is threaded into aluminum and I loosen it up and tighten it up and then eventually it strips the aluminum. So I would put a steel like keen cert in or time cert, all right, or stuff like this. So usually these pointers uh, are just looped and then like sandwiched between the washer. But this one, he actually drills the bolt so that it pinches this and that keeps it keeps it so much more stable it doesn't end up moving or spreading out so like something like that these like there's a bunch of little things with this notcher that you can tell he's a guy that's used the product and made it better or took a bunch of good ideas and made one even better like there's so many little things here that i'm impressed with so um there'll be some things again that i will change <clears throat> and that's you know sharpening this down to a point bending it real close to the degree wheel and then using an angle finder, setting this thing on its side, and then making sure that, you know, 180, 90, you know, straight up and down, like all of it's like perfect. So I will make sure that that's good. Uh, but man, I'm super impressed with something like this where you drill the bolt and use it as a pinch. I hate having to loop the welding rod in here because that's usually what this is, just some ER70 welding rod um, that, you know, usually these guys loop it around like JD squared. The JD square tubing bender, that's exactly what they do. They just got like welding rod that's looped around some threaded bolt. And man, it's it's awful. <laughs> it's just awful. So this right here, nice little touch. So this is the, the setup here. Your shaft with the hole saw on it goes over here. And then this is where your material is going to get clamped. The next section that we'll talk about is this guy here. This guy here is the block that the notching shafts go through with your hole saw, okay? So your hole saw goes onto your shafts. There's a half inch one and a five eighths one. These bearings are some really nice needle roller bearings. They're made in America. Um, so they're definitely some good quality bearings. And then you can see, we'll actually take one of these bolts out so you can see. You can see what I'm talking about where he already put steel inserts into the aluminum. So when you tighten these things and loosen them up a thousand times, they don't strip the aluminum out. Again, he's really thought through a lot of different things on this and it's stuff like that. American made bearings, keen cert, pinched welding rod. I can't give it enough praise so far, okay? There will be a couple things that I will criticize on it, but we'll get to those um, once we put this thing together. So we got our block that the rod goes through. The next thing is this is the handle that will tighten up the upper guillotine portion, okay? This is basically um, just a piece of flat stock with a square nut welded onto it. And honestly, it doesn't need to be any more or less there, okay? This appears to be a grade eight just based on how it looks, but it is hard to tell. And, you know, whether it wears or not, time will tell, but I'm pretty confident on how strong this is and the quality, you know, just looking at the rest of the quality um, that he knows better. And he even includes a washer that goes up under this so that it doesn't wear the top of this or wear out this. Then you got your shafts. These are one piece shafts. So he threads the ends. This looks like a ground a ground surface, I don't know if it can focus on it, but then he has not only where the drill goes, a tri-flat for the drill, but he's also got two flats so you can put a crescent wrench on it and break loose these guys, because these guys will get super tight and then they'll be hard to get off. Well, you can grab the two flats with a crescent and then break this off with a screwdriver through the hole usually. That's a nice little touch. Then we have our upper guillotine plate. Sorry, I got a cough drop in my mouth, uh, sore throat. So, so we got ball bearings that ride along the side here. We got a nice little handle for picking it up. All the bolts are lock nut bolts. So they're um, rounded head Allen screws or button head Allen screws with lock nuts. Everything on this is TIG welded. Super nice quality welds on everything, on the nut, um, on the stuff back here. So to put this together, essentially what you got is your upper guillotine plate just slides down like that, okay? 
Now you could put the threaded rod in first, but this thing's nice and lined up that I'll usually just leave it like that. You take your threaded rod. Now one thing I'm gonna do is I'll set this camera down real quick. So one thing I like to do, and this definitely has its pros and cons, is I use a CMD Extreme Pressure Lube number three. It's an anti-scoring, anti-galling lubricant. It is amazing for what I'm about to use it for. But I will warn you, because there's thick lubricant on there, it will collect metal dust and chips on it. So while this will extend the life of your threads and nuts greatly, I mean, you'll literally have no galling for 20, 30 years, you have to make sure you clean it. So it's a catch 22. You could leave it without and just blow it off with an air gun most of the time, or you can use this, clean it, and it will last forever. The thing, the thing with the notchers is, is usually you're using some kind of spray lubricant sometimes to notch, and that lubricant will also get on this, all right, and that will collect metal dust and chips anyway. So regardless, you're gonna get metal dust and chips on this, and you're gonna wanna clean it once in a while. But I'm gonna use a little bit of this just on the threads up here at the top where it screws into the base plate, okay? And that's just gonna help it survive uh, some life. I gotta grab a paper towel. All right, so. This just screws into the top like that and just kind of hand, hand let it bottom out. And then I'll put a tiny bit of this on both sides of that. Again, this is an anti-scoring lubricant, okay? So that when you're tightening this stuff down, those metals won't gall. And then I'll usually just do one stripe all the way up. I didn't do a very good job there all the way up and then I just run my finger up it and you don't need a lot just that just that little bit will really help make sure that these threads never gall up All right, we want to leave room to get the tube in there. So we got this thing down a little bit. We got room for the tube. All right, so that's that, okay? So we got, we got the upper guillotine plate, the threaded rod, the washers in there, and the T-handle to tighten it down, okay? Then we're going to put this on. Now, initially, when I did this, I didn't realize that he already has really nice um, indexing lines here that you can mark, you know. So, like this Sharpie right here, I marked that for inch and a half. So, I lined it up with the little spot right there on the billet, which is on both sides, okay? And then I know that that's inch and a half because I, I already checked it and kind of got it set up to save some time on the camera. So, we're going to go ahead and get that bolted in. So you just loosen your four bolts. And then another thing it looks like he did is basically all the nuts on this are the same size. They're all 9 16 um, which is really nice. So 9 16 on the impact. tighten it up I'm just using it to uh, get it close and then I'll just put a wrench on it and get it the rest of the way tight now initially I thought I was gonna have to loosen and tighten this to clock it but no this is actually just like a pivot bolt that has a lock nut on the bottom so this you'll never have to touch this thread here goes to a nut on the bottom 
that you can break loose and then clock clock it at whatever angle you want to notch at, okay? So, we'll turn it like that. I'm also going to put uh, some of this lubricant in the bearing. Again, this is gonna collect dust and debris and chips and stuff. So you do have to clean it once in a while, but it will make these bearings live probably longer than me. I'll never have to replace these bearings. So. Now one thing I didn't do is contact Adam or look on his website to see if there was any directions. So I am kind of going rogue here, but I've used a lot of notchers and I'm making a lot of assumptions that uh, I know what I'm doing. So we got some of that lubricant on there. You can see the, the lubricant in the bearings. And this thing is, once you tighten up that lock nut, we'll leave this, uh, let's leave it at like a 45. So we'll tighten up that lower nut. So now it's locked in at a 45. So, now we can take, I don't know if this tube's too short. Yeah, that tube's too short. Now we can take our tubing here. locked in and lined up and then you just tighten up this upper handle nice and sturdy in there all right so boom now your notch is set up ready to notch okay we got the tubing locked down in there this is tight we got this in there see how and it was super easy to set up a little lubricant on this guy little lubricant inside there, clean it good once in a while, and this thing's gonna last a long time. We're gonna go ahead and notch this tube just to kind of show you how it works. And then I'm also gonna notch a piece of plate steel, which is pretty cool that this thing can do. One more thing I wanna add on just the, the fine details that BuildCo has put into shipping this thing. The packaging was great. And this is also just one of those silly little things that I appreciate. I've ran my own business. I ran my own business for five years. I shipped a ton of products across the United States and over the world, and I know what it takes to, to do these little fine details, and this is stuff that I have never even thought of, and I love this. So he's got stickers. This is like a packaging slip, okay? So I'm not going to dox myself, but this right here, your packing slip is a thick piece of paper. So he uses extra thick paper to fold your packing slip and your stickers in so that the stickers don't get damaged. Like usually companies just toss stickers in a box. I have a box right there, that cardboard box right over there, just got it today, and the stickers just tossed in with the packing material. Stickers all crumpled up and stuff. That's pretty normal, you know, you, that's what you see when you buy products. I've got a ton of stickers from a ton of different products and that's pretty normal. Adam here said, I want you to keep my stickers nice and pristine so I'm going to use a thick piece of paper as the packing slip. It's little things. It's all these little things on here that I really appreciate from this guy. So I'm really glad that we got a partnership going. I'll mention this again at the end of the video. But if you go in my link tree on my Instagram or on my YouTube video down below. So if you go on my Instagram, it's in the bio. On this YouTube video, it's right below. There's a link to his website. If you use the code NERDY, N-E-R-D-Y, NERDY, 5% off everything on his website, okay? So you're gonna save some money on this. I think the retail is $5.99 and it's well worth every penny. I've used notchers and, and machining tools. I've been in this industry for 20 years and I can tell you the fine details and the customer service so far has been phenomenal. 
Adam did not know I was going to ask to partner up with him. And this guy helped me and answered questions. And he was just so phenomenal. And then we started working together and I got a notcher here. I got a little bit of a discount on it and I'm going to rep them because man, this is a great product. So let's go ahead and notch this tube and see how it works. All right, so I'm going to switch the tubing out. I'm going to do some 120 wall, uh, 4130 chromoly, one inch on a 45. So when we get that in there, if you just want to notch just the end, you really just want to line up that corner right there. We'll get that in there. We'll tighten that up. All right. Obviously a corded drill is definitely best, but this right here is a solid notch. I gotta go deburr it, but man, that is a good tight fit right there. So I'll take you over and show you kind of how I deburr a notch real quick. All right. That's a nylon deburring wheel over there, and it just cleans up any little leftover edge. So we'll take it back over here. Just see how good and tight that is. So, a couple things. I would definitely, I'm gonna go get a corded drill uh, I hooked one up initially when I had the, the larger inch and a half tube and it was a hammer drill that you could turn the hammer off. It was from Harbor Freight. I think the chuck's been on it. It was vibrating real bad and I was having issues with it. So I just finished the notch and decided to swap it out and went with this, um, cordless is, you know, if you got like a, a DeWalt or Milwaukee cordless probably would be fine for certain sizes, but for um my old Ry ryobi stuff here definitely not gonna cut it so i'm gonna go i'll go get a quarter drill this thing here is amazing honestly i can't say enough you're gonna see me use it in so many videos there's gonna be so many tubes on my rural drive civic that i'm building all the tubes in this chassis will be notched with this so definitely stay tuned on this channel if you're not following the project but stay tuned i'll be using this notcher a lot and then i'm probably gonna have a second video just doing a project with the notcher, working with it, cutting with it. So I gotta order some better hole saws. I'm gonna go get me a cordless drill or corded drill. And then now uh, we're gonna make a little project with just this notcher on a second like review video. And we'll talk about the notcher some more. Um, again, I, I talked about all the good stuff. The, the only cons I see in this notcher are some of the edges could be deburred a little bit better. And then I wish there was an option for like coating, but at the end of the day, it's a notch in a fab shop. The thing's going to be covered with oil. I get why it's not coated. Most of the time, the coatings that come on tools like this always flake off and chip off. So what I'll probably end up doing is using some like steel it paint or something along those lines, POR 15, something really heavy duty and just like spraying some of these components so that they're they have like some kind of paint and coating on them. But again, you got so many metal to metal on surfaces. So I, I get why he doesn't coat these because it, it can just cause more issues. This thing's a solid product. And those are my really only two criticisms, you know, but again, deburring the stuff, it's like some of it's perfect and just a couple of little spots weren't. I'm super picky about things being deburred. I got sensitive little hands. So, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I hope you guys like the product review. 
I absolutely love this notcher. I can't wait to put some miles on it and uh, we'll talk about it some more. Thank you guys for tuning in.